Good morning guys, it's me again, my name is JC Ryan James Cropper. And this morning I'm going to be setting up a little experiment, a kind of prerequisite to an experimental Ormus that I'm going to be making within the near future. A long time ago I used to play with electrolysis in order to make colloidals. Now electrolysis is when you essentially pass a current through two metal wires made out of either silver or copper or gold and you put those into a solution of distilled water and you run a current through it. And as you run the current through it, the electrons will tear apart the metals to a very small, small degree. Now I'm going to show you what I've just made and I'll actually show you the experiment itself, me making colloidal copper, because the hope for this, well behind this, is for me to be able to rip this apart without using acids, using electrolysis first and then dry it out by removing the participant or I let the copper sit for about a week to two weeks, maybe even a month, I'm not sure how long it will take. All I remember is it back in, I think it was 2010, when I used to make this stuff, I made too much of it, I made it wrong and I got a little sick because metals don't do well in the body and everyone back then was under the belief that it was good for you. I took a little bit, it made me sick, so I stopped taking it. And the thing is, is I like to do everything like to an extreme level. So I made a lot and it just sat inside of a jar and all of it settled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a lot of copper, colloidal copper, and you'll see the lovely color it turns into. And once it's sat, I'll take away the clear liquid on top. I'll then take that copper and I'll add some other elements in there. Or I'll just add lye, or in other words, sodium hydroxide, in order to further break down the bonds between the copper. This is called degradation. Okay. So I'm gonna get my tripod and then I'll show you what I'm making. Okay, so as you just saw, I made myself a battery pack out of four 9 volt batteries. I synced them up and I added some crocodile clips along with some adapters of a sale. This is very cheap online, it's very affordable. And within this beaker is distilled water. And these are the copper wires that I use. It actually looked like this in the beginning, but I wrapped it around pencil and I created more of a spring type effect. I originally wanted to go with this because this is what I used to use back in the day, but then I thought it'd be more practical just to do it this way as well, get more metal within the beaker. And what I'm about to do is I'm about to run a current through these. As I run the current through them, it will tear apart the copper and you'll see exactly what it looks like. And and this is, this is one of my favorite parts because it looks so pretty. So let's get it going. Okay, so I found out that distilled water doesn't work because there's nothing in it for the current to flow through because it's empty water. There's no minerals in it, no salts, nothing. So now I'm gonna be using bottled water instead. The bottled water I can cleanse through the Oromus making process anyway. It started. Okay, get started. This looks really cool. I'm not sure if you can see it from here. There are bubbles forming inside the beaker, as you can see. Now that side, which looks like a really cool oxygenating type of effect, isn't the side of which where the copper is going to be ripping apart. It actually happens 
on this side. See that? That's micro. That's, that's so small. <laughs> that's the copper being torn to pieces. It's a nice white blue. As that becomes more and more dense, you're really going to see the color. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Look, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to set up my camera so you guys can see this. I'm just going to let it flow. And you'll get to watch how cool this is. Some equate this to the fountain of youth because copper has the ability to increase the body's collagen production and it's blue so it looks like a kind of youthing agent also. But that is not the case in this metallic state. You have to turn it into Oromus first and that is what I'm going to be doing, turning this into Oromus. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, today we are looking at the participant, that is the participant of copper that's been broken down from these worlds. As you can see, it's settled and that's what's left. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take off a portion of the clear liquid and add some sea salt minerals in there to increase the current running through the solution then I can make more of a colloidal. And a colloidal is nothing more than a solution that pertains of one or more element that has been broken down to a soluble level, to a more of a, a solution type degree, where it can freely move throughout the water, making it look like a kind of elixir, making it appear as one color, but in all actuality, it's just a bunch of little tiny things within one body of water. And it doesn't just pertain to elements actually, it also pertains to specific combinations of things. Tea is a colloidal. When you make tea with a tea bag, all the herbs leaking into the water. Same with coffee and other things. They've all became colloidal substances. Now as you can see here, these are the last coils that I use in order to create the colloidal. But I was only getting so much if you can look over there at the measurements on the beaker, under 100 grams I was getting. Much, actually, I was getting a lot less than that. I'd say it wasn't even reaching the measurement scale at all. So this is the last beaker. And as you can see, from those coils, that's all that was all pulled off of the copper. That's a problem. That's not much at all. And I had a theory. The theory was that the coil that I created, the coils, would only go so low within the beaker and then it would leave that exact amount of space from the bottom of the beaker to the bottom of the coil. And then it started to burn. And if I didn't shake the coil enough, then it would just create a much more a darker colloidal copper, which is okay because it's going into a high temperature environment anyway. And it will start burning within that environment to the point where it doesn't even look blue anymore. But the problem is, is that's not enough. That happened within the first couple of hours, and then it just stopped building. And I had it on all day. The batteries didn't waver in the slightest, and I brought new batteries. I decided to buy these ones. These ones are rechargeable batteries. Because uh, the Duracell ones died within the first five or six hours. These were going all day yesterday. They were going strong. They were fine. So with these new coils, they're not only much thicker, and I've actually used less metal here, you know. but look at that gap from the bottom to the top. That's what I was experimenting with, and it seems to be working.
this experimented uh, participant that you saw there, that, that, that Oromus that you just saw there, that is what is known as a high spin state Oromus meaning the molecules within the Oromus are so active that it gives the Oromus specific attributes they, it seems alive, it moves when you don't look at it and, then, and even when you're looking at it, it moves, it just behaves as if it's conscious sometimes, supposedly, it, it crawls up and out of the actual jar as you leave the lid open this specific Oromus that you just saw there was created in a vortex, completely undisturbed. I haven't touched it at all. Matter of fact, I haven't even opened the top of the jar. I haven't put my hand in there, I haven't spanned it around, nothing. The bottom, you saw the Oromus, and the Oromus had settled. If I had interacted with it or, or influenced the experiment in some way, shape or form, then the Oromus would have risen and you would have seen it within the water. But as you had seen, it had set, matter of fact it set a couple of days ago, I hadn't touched it and ever since then it keeps spiralling matter of fact the first time I washed this was about a week ago and it just keeps spiralling undisturbed, it's like a constant amount of energy or, or motion and there's no batteries in there, it's, it's not taking energy from any outsource, it's not, it's not outsourcing its energy, you know what I mean? It's like the energy comes from the Ormus itself, and that's a theory that people have said, and, and some say it's not even a theory. Some are adamant in believing that the Ormus, being that it's in a state of exotic matter, it's in and out of dimensions, it comes back from that dimension with a little bit more oomph, a little bit more energy, and it, it's essentially a, a constant source of energy, you know? It, it, leaves this reality, literally the molecules disappear, go into the etheric realm, bring energy from that realm into this one and it gives it its properties. Supposedly this weird fifth state of matter <laughs> lights up if you feed it to plants, they light up. There are documents on this, uh, documentations of orbs floating out of the water and even the water itself coming out of the jars and, and hovering into people's living rooms and hearing voices out of these these water globules because they, they act as a kind of intermediary the, a kind of communication device from one plane to another and even stories about how elves have materialized out of this matter because they use it as a doorway into this dimension it's pretty cool I'm never opposed to this information that I'm hearing. I'm the kind of guy who likes to experiment with it first and see firsthand the results. And what I'm seeing is this new state of matter that I'm creating, other than the Dead Sea Saw Ormus that I created months ago, this version seems to be much more active, much more potent, and I have yet to put it into my body, but just the, the way in which I made it, the way in which it actually turned Ormus was different even. It just lends to the suggestibility that this is coming across as a much more potent, high quality form, more etheric formed Oromus. Um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Soon, all of the copper that I'm breaking apart and other minerals I'm going to be taking, I'm going to be making a much more higher quality version of Oromus, much higher, higher quality than this one. I'm actually going to let it burn for maybe a whole day, 12 hours, perhaps, perhaps even more than 12 hours. And that's going to create a much higher spin rate of the atoms. This is probably sounding a little confusing. It's going to make more sense as I start releasing more content on my YouTube channel about Oromus. I'll break it down, the simple science. But for those of you who have already done a bit of research on Oromus, you'll know what I'm saying. But those of you who are new to this, essentially... Oromus is a fifth state of a previous struct a previously structured matter. Okay? A fifth state of a previously structured matter, which is a third state of matter. What I'm basically doing is I'm basically 
using specific heat methods and specific acid methods in order to break apart the bonds between specific elements. That is when you start shifting around the atoms of the element themselves and you can actually rearrange atoms. You can completely get rid of them if you want. When you rearrange them, you basically end up shifting metals into other metals. Uh, for example, lead is just one atom away from gold take away the atom and all of a sudden you've shifted it to a different state of metal uh, but I don't see any value in creating gold that's not what I'm doing here because the value isn't in the gold the gods knew this or they were calling the gods back then the value is in extended life it's in replenishing the energy bodies to the point where you end up exhibiting weird fifth state fifth dimensional or etheric properties yourself on a physical level. I'm talking about teleportation and levitation and other weird abilities which deal with a higher energetical being in a sense. The gods knew that and gold when you turn it into Oromus tends to have a more more of a highly energetical input when it comes to the input in your body, you putting the substance into your body. But yeah, I mean, that's all it is. It's you basically tearing apart atoms and rearranging them, leaving them singular if need be, which then creates Oromus. It shifts it out of a metallic state into a more of a milky state. It's a completely different state of matter. It's no longer considered metallic. So it's not like you're turning metal into metal. It's you're turning dirt into a plant, essentially. That's a very different analogy, but essentially that's what you're doing. That's how different the states are, okay? And you're turning minerals into milk, essentially. It looks like milk, the milk of the earth, people call it. Apparently there are spaces in this earth where the temperature hasn't reached a specific height and oxygen hasn't hit the liquids within these spaces of the earth and these liquids are orimus and then once the temperature shifts or it's exposed to oxygen then it pops like popcorn into specific elements specific minerals which are used in order to well, sustain the earth so what i'm essentially doing is i'm reversing the earth's natural process i'm turning it back into a milky substance it tastes and looks like milk of magnesia when you put it in the body, another theory out there is that because it has yet to flip into these elements, the Oromus is very intelligent and it scans your biology and it basically gives you exactly what you're lacking. I'll be making more videos about Oromus in the future, but I just wanted to show you guys this Oromus and, and I wanted to speed up the video. I shot a video prior to this recording in order to show you guys the speed in which it was moving, but it wasn't light enough in this kitchen and slash laboratory and I didn't record it for long enough a period of a time to show you the spin not only that but I was holding it with my hands so you couldn't properly see it moving on its own today I've got it on a tripod so yeah let's continue the experiment speak to pretty soon peace